of time, all we can do is vote. We don't have to ask for objections. All right, it is 11.40, the meeting is back to order. Now that we've handled, for what purpose does the member rise? Adam Tesh, uh, I'd like to make a motion to move the YA Hugo discussion up in the agenda. To, to now? The, yes. No. To the, to the item after the next item. To the item after the, so you, we are it's currently, it's yeah, we're currently at A or B. B23. B23. So you'd like us to do B23 and then B211. That is correct. Is there a second for this motion? Do we really need to debate this? No. no. All right. All those in favor of moving B211 to after B23, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed? Eyes have it. The eyes appear to have it. The eyes do have it. We will handle B23, then B211. That means we are now on B23. Thank you. Two years are good enough. It is on page 10. 10. We have 10 minutes of debate for this. Mr. Buff, as the maker of the motion, would you like to speak in favor? And please, for the record, if you're using the microphone, do, not that you do this, do speak into the microphone and speak slowly. It will benefit both the members and the secretary. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Warren Buff. Uh, we are making this motion for a variety of reasons. Uh, chief among them is that this has created a ton of administrative overhead to try and match the list of next year's Worldcon with this year's when both lists are actively expanding. The number of new voters gained from this, from this nearly 50 hours of work is down around 100, 150 new, new nominators. So the gains are minuscule compared to the overhead on our administrators. The state we're asking to return to, current and previous year, is precisely the state that we had for nominations when I arrived in Worldcon fandom in 2008. This is a recent innovation. It's a recent innovation that we've found to be impractical from an administrative standpoint. And for those reasons, I'd like to see us reverse it. Thank you. Is there a speech against the motion? Seeing none. Is there any objection to calling the question? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. The question is on first passage of two years is good enough as written on page 10 of your agendas. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Hands down, all those opposed? The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it. The motion passes and will be sent on to Worldcon 75. That brings us to B211, which is on page. Nobody stood up to read the amendment. We are on B211. Page 27 on your song sheet. 27. Um, is Miss Rask in the room? There. Would you like to make a speech in favor? Is 27. The very bottom. Can someone bring me an agenda, please? Thank you. Can I just can I just make a statement in general? Thank you. Okay, good. Yeah, I'll do that. I. It's time for a speech in favor. Oh, no, it was, it was Linda who wanted one, and we got one. No, she, she got. The secretary has an agenda. We're all set. Miss Rask, a speech in favor. There are, for the record, uh, 14 minutes of debate. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Katie Rask. I am uh, the chair of the YA Award. Committee, um, I just I wanted to just make a few statements um, in general before uh, you guys really start debating. Um, I know that it's been hard for everybody to read through this gigantic agenda we have, so I'll just make a few points. First of all, for those who were here yesterday, the um, Young Adult Committee was uh, voted in again for next year. We will um, continue discussing some of these issues. 
I wanted to thank everybody for debating uh, the proposal that we've put forward now. Um, most of our uh, work this year was actually addressing the feasibility of an award, so we really um, do want to get your feedback on what you think of this proposal. So thank you all for debating that now. Um, just some of the details about the proposal that we have in front of you now. We didn't want to put any specifics of award administration into the Constitution, um, as this has come up repeatedly over the last few days. And as such, that's one of the reasons we do not have a definition of young adult uh, in the uh, award as you uh, see it before you. Um, there is a sunset clause for three years after ratification. Um, I'd also like to point out the first provision to uh, the insertion of the amendment, uh, provided that filling the blank in this amendment to name the award shall not be considered a greater change in the scope of the amendment. We actually um, included this. Um, I know that um, every, lots of people had ideas for names for an award of this type if it were to be passed. And we actually spent a lot of time discussing this uh, as a committee, and we didn't include a lot of the details of that discussion uh, because that would be something that next year's committee would address because we found that it's actually a much more complicated issue than um, we tend to think. Um, so we have a list of uh, names possible um, for an award, but we also have a, a list of objects that would be possible names for an award um, in case there are some issues with uh, picking a, an individual to represent the award. Um, this, we would address all of this and research uh, the logistics, um, the legal elements, uh, the social elements associated with particular individuals or named topics. And um, we would present that all to the business meeting next year and make that public beforehand so the business meeting could vote on it or decide what they liked best. Okay, so um, I think that is all I have um, for you guys now, right. unless there are any questions. Speech against <sighs> Ms. Secor. Hello, everybody. I'm Kate Secor. Talking Please to the mic. Speak. Sorry. It was taller yesterday. Um, I'm not actually against the idea of a YA award. I'm very much in favor of a YA award and was, in fact, on the committee for the last two years. I object to this specific proposal because I actually think it's bad for YA. Um, I have really sincere concerns, and I've talked to several authors who share those concerns, that creating a non Hugo YA award actually ghettoizes YA that it will prevent YA from ever appearing on the actual Hugo ballot. And honestly, there are a lot of authors that winning a Hugo branded Hugo is actually really important to them. Like they came up through fandom, the Hugo is the award that's meaningful to them. I have concerns that creating a, a separate award will prevent those authors, will make those authors feel like they could never win the award that they grew up feeling was so important and now they're gonna win this other thing. And it'll be the, the Campbell and the Blink Award are not really Hugo, right? And it'll, I, that's, that's sincerely my objection. Is there a speech in favor? In favor. I'm going to recognize the gentleman here. My name is David Peterson. By the way, I'm 4230. I just need your name. Um, pardon? I just need your name to just bring the back um, uh, first, uh, I wanted to say that, of course, uh, I've, we've also spoken to a number of YA authors, including a few YA authors that are here, uh, pre uh, you know, presenting um, at Worldcon, who, uh, and all of those authors I've talked to have had exactly the same opinion. I think that they think that it would be outstanding for there to be a Hugo Award uh, for YA, but understanding the feelings of those who vote to put the Hugos on, they believe that a Campbell Award is not a bad solution. Not only that, I would like to just remind us that the, the committee, if, if I've got this year right, the first time that a YA Hugo was proposed was 25 years ago. And the award has come up again and again and again and been debated again and again and again and been defeated again and again and again. And I want to impress upon the voters now that we have heard your objections and we are taking them very seriously and we're trying our very best to get some sort of recognition for YA here at Worldcon. And this was our best compromise. So again, 